I always say it's something different, but this week it is something different. We're talking solid state batteries. That's why we've got an EV with us with Naraj Sharma, Associate Professor at University of New South Wales. One of the key findings was that the volume doesn't change very much. So if you imagine uh, a battery in, in your car, you often have a little bit of a volume expansion and contraction as you charge and discharge, yep, yep. This, this happens. And, and, and that's what shortens the life of the battery, right? One part of it, yes. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's often a cascade of different things that happen and um, that, that's an active area of research too. Uh, but essentially your battery has cells and each cell has components and each of them sort of expand and contract. And yep. what we've found is found a substance that actually doesn't do that. It stays like this just all the way through. Yeah. And uh, as you charge and discharge it, it just stays like this. So you can imagine um, over time, if you do this thousands of cycles, if it stays the same, it's going to be a lot more stable and therefore your lifetime might be better. Now we are only talking about what a lot of people don't realise is that inside this, for example, has lithium ion batteries. Inside this battery pack, which is huge and is under the bottom of the car, is a whole lot of uh, large AA cells. They're bigger than AA. Just a little and bit bigger, yeah. Inside that is this terribly toxic material. So typically, yes, uh, inside, so, so a, a car like this might have a, a thousand, two thousand cells, 3, 000, yeah, yeah. yeah, something like this. Um, and then you would have, uh, each of those would have three main components, typically. Uh, the anode, the cathode, and an electrolyte. Right, um, and uh, it'd be sort of rolled up, much like a cigarette, right? You roll it up um, and you put it into one of these cells, or you'd have something like a, uh, a pouch cell. So the pouch cell is what you find in your mobile phones. Right. right? So it's, it's, it's this bit here, which is a bit yep. like that, right? Um, and then what happens is uh, the electrolyte bit is often a liquid, right? Um, and so what we do with these particular batteries is we change that liquid into a solid, Right, and what you have is your lithium ions, which are the charge carriers. So that's still a lithium ion battery. It's still a lithium yep. ion battery, uh, just going backwards and forwards. Right, so a bit like tennis, you know, you're going one side to the other side, and so as you charge, it goes one way, as you discharge, it goes the other way. So as you charge your battery up, as you use it up. Charge, use, it just right. goes backwards now and forwards. And this happens on each of those thousand cells, and they all join together in a, in a, in a sort of a pack to give you the power that you need. Too strong. Now, the, uh, we were talking before about the longevity of these batteries. Correct. The part of the problem with the solid state batteries in the past has been the degradation of a particular part. Correct. Which then caused the rest of it not to work very well. And your research was sort of solved that problem as it were. It, it How did that happen? It, 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 uh, well, you so, researched it, that's how it happened, but it, well, I mean, what happened so exactly? I, I, I guess one of the things is um, all batteries degrade, yes. right? So you've got to understand that these batteries also degrade. There's yes. chemical reactions that happen on the surface. Absolutely. And over time, they do degrade. One right? of the biggest problems. Exactly. And if you can solve that, fantastic, right? An everlasting battery, beautiful. The, the ideal battery will, will not degrade. And, and part of that is all the components. And so if all the components are stable and they don't change over time as you're charging and discharging right so you're doing chemical reactions yeah and you don't want them to change uh that is what you that, that's an ideal battery but um your test our, units so our test units in the solid state batteries that we've developed uh they seem to doing they seem to be really good doing, doing really well i should say excuse me for that um, by do, doing really well you mean they're very stable they're very stable in other words they're not degrading they're not degrading as much as uh, <laughs> as a scientist i can't say they're completely not just degrading there are degrade degradation I, pathways i'm not going to hold a flame to your feet <laughs> if it does but, but um <laughs> Initial tests and results show that they are actually quite stable and they're not degrading. Um, but you have to understand this is an idealized lab-based Absolutely. System, right? And so, you know, we, we, do, we do have an invariant material. We've shown that and we've shown that it actually is, stays invariant under various conditions. Um, and now it's the thing of how do we make the other components invariant? Right. We'll leave that charge. to someone else. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> I mean, we, we, can, we can try various ideas. I mean, this is what experimenting is all about, right? I love experimenting, love trying to figure out, you know, how can we, we've got one solution. How can we make that? Another little pearl that fell into my lap this morning was the Australian Battery Society. You'll never guess, you'll never guess who's, who's running it, who started it. Who started it? Uh, colleague, a few colleagues and I. 
So, uh, he said modestly. Yeah. And uh, the aim of that is? To basically bring researchers, industry and government together. Uh, it's a not-for-profit uh, to actually talk about getting a battery industry in Australia, growing the battery industry in Australia. We do really well at mining. We do, we're getting better at processing battery materials and, and you know, uh, looking at lithium ion battery materials. We do that really well. Uh, we do integration of lithium ion batteries into packs and modules and things like this and in electric vehicles and in energy storage really well. And we monitor that really well. We don't do this middle bit that well. And so this is what we want to do. We want to make more batteries here in Australia. We want to grow the community. We want to grow the research. We want to grow the next generation of researchers, industrialists, you know, people who work in here. So, so we could make batteries for cars like this, this EV6 GT review coming up. Yeah, plug, so, plug. yeah so we can actually do that sort of stuff here. Um, and there's a, there's a groundswell to do this, right? We want to do this um, and the government's behind it and everyone's behind it. And so we just have to make sure that we have the right networks in place and we do it well. And how long before we see do you think a solid state kind of, we have a timeline okay, where it might so, be a solid so, state so, battery car? Because one of the questions about it was, would a solid state battery, this has got around 80 kilowatt hours, would it be bigger or smaller, lighter or, or heavier? And what would the range be? And we can't really answer any of those questions. We can only suppose. And what do we suppose? I'm going to take back to your first question. When do we want to see a solid state battery? All right. Tomorrow? So, uh, Commercially, there's about three or four different companies who yep. are working on prototype commercialization now. Fantastic. Um, using different technologies out there. Um, and so they're going through the whole assessment procedure, doing yep. making different shape cell sizes and things like this. Um, and a number of them have partnerships with vehicle manufacturers. So to, to actually start integrating solid state batteries in, in vehicles. Um, when, when will it actually be sort of widely used? How long's a bit of string? Yeah, yeah, it depends. Um, um, can this incumbent technology be overcome? Right, not overcome, but um, displaced, in a sense. It's taken a while to get electric vehicles well, rather than petroleum. Well, we um, say that, but it's about a mindset, isn't it? You and I have a similar mindset in this as we were talking off camera before. You've just ordered a car, you can say what it is if yeah, you Yeah, like. we've just ordered a car, we've just got our solar panels in and we've just got our battery pack at home in too. So. We're going to be um, because ideally. Climate change is a thing. Yeah. You know, and we have thing. to lead by example, right? And if you don't lead by example, because you're going solid state, so a lithium ion battery, it's still a lithium ion yep. solid state battery, um, but you can use different components. And if you use different components, you can then sort of counteract the differences between a solid and a liquid uh, and the weight differences. And so what you could be looking at is something about half the size, roughly, right? And something, weight wise? Sorry? Weight wise would be. About the same, right? About the same as this? Uh, I would have to do because the maths for it. Uh, I would have to do the maths for it, but it could be about the same. Or do we have time? I'll give you a pencil and pad. <laughs> no, but it depends on what chemistries people use. Um, so I think it could be as light, wow. or if not a bit lighter, uh, as, as a sort of as educated guess. Um, but the size could be smaller because you can reduce some of the packing materials. In honesty, you probably could get a lighter. Here's a zinger because I know what's coming. How fast could this charge potentially? Fast, <laughs> very fast. Uh, because well, the thing is that limits it is, is a solid state battery, the electrolyte, yep. right? The, yep. How fast the ions can move through it. Um, and, and that generates heat. It does, but in, in this case, you've got the, the material is quite robust. But, all, but in this case though, that heat it's has to be dissipated by cooling. So when the char car is using 350 kilowatt charging to get from 20 to 80 in 18 minutes or whatever it is, yeah. this thing is whirring like a son of a bitch because it's trying, it's using the car's cooling system to cool the batteries. Correct. So that, the, and the hose in the, in the um, unit has to also be cooled and the unit has to be cooled. Yeah. So in a solid state battery, you may avoid all the cooling altogether. You might not need a cooling units in the thing. Which was just something Naraj mentioned on the way over, just, just as, a, as a casual zinger, which I see is one of the biggest problems with batteries. Yeah. The thing you might need to do is heat it up a bit. So in an Australian climate, that's great, isn't it? Well, we say that, but uh, one of the things that uh, the navigation system will do is if, it, if you navigate to a charger and it uh, it knows you're going to use a supercharger, it'll preheat the batteries for you. Yeah, so it's already there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's already there, right? So that, that, that infrastructure is always there. So the other thing is, um, these batteries, 
uh, the electrolyte that they use, they often boil at about 70, 80 degrees Celsius, right? So it's not, it's not ridiculously, and then what that means is if it boils, often uh, the electrolyte will turn from liquid to gas, and it'll just go like this, and all the batteries will go like this, but a solid state battery, that's good till a couple hundred degrees well, Celsius. Can I just say I have a Surface 3? I'm going to say no more. My, yeah, my, it, my screen split because the battery expanded. I yeah. didn't quite understand how that could happen. But yeah, if you're above 70 degrees odd, your electrolyte boils. So if you've got a liquid and electrolyte and it's sealed, oh. that's what's happening. Um, so it's probably not dangerous, right? Because you're, you're disconnecting the battery, so you're shorting it, right? And in a sense, not Could the stuff it. leak out? You could, it could leak out, yeah. That so that's a little bit dangerous. That part is At dangerous, what point yes. do we get to fire? Um, most batteries will just fail, right? So they won't... I know how they feel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but um, the fire is, is... There's often, again, a cascade of events that happens. Um, but... Uh, what is it that's burning? Is it the something that's not going to be in a solid state battery? Yes. So solid state batteries would be well, less likely to That would to be burn. the one that would start it off. But so, so in a liquid electrolyte battery, for example, in a conventional battery, you have something that starts it off, which is often an electrolyte or related to the electrolyte. Yep. It heats up and then it starts boiling and then you have other reactions that propagate this. Um, in a solid state battery, you've avoided that. So in essence, you don't have that reaction and therefore you don't propagate it. And in principle, it shouldn't, it shouldn't do that, right? So, well, none of yours have. No, and... Uh, well, you said that really, there was, a, there was a hint of hesitation. Have you had a disaster you're not telling us about? Not on a solid state battery, no. <laughs> I have, you know, expanded my other batteries um, and, and things like this and, you know... Um, it's the good thing about being an academic. You could play, you could play. <laughs> we, we would look, we were trying we to see if this would happen. Yeah, we would do it safely though. You know, we have the protection, we have the perspex shields and things like this. I'd we're... rather do it from another suburb. Yeah, I put my money where my batteries are. No. Um. It's been, it, it's been <laughs> an absolute pleasure and I can't wait for the next instalment.